We'll praise the Lord and greet us in the awesome and master's name of Jesus. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. We thank God for just allowing us to assemble ourselves together one more time. And you all that are watching and uh, listening, I pray that God will bless you and that God will not only keep you, but will strengthen you. We are very grateful for God's his mercy and his grace. Amen. So we we honor him. Amen. And, and, and the Bible says in all that ways acknowledge him. So we, we give God praise in everything. He deserved to be praised. God deserved to be magnified. He deserved to be exalted. My, it is him that has, that not only have saved you and, and filled you with his Holy Ghost, but it is him that has kept you. So God deserved to be praised. Amen. Through some storms, through some trials, through some sickness, my God. God has been a keeper and he's been a way maker. So I'm praying for you. Christ temple, I love you. Amen. God got us coming around the curve and I'm so excited. And amen. So and God has not only been just providing wisdom and an insight to the doctors and medical people, but also he's been just, just been allowing his angels to have charge, amen, concerning me. Watching over you and protecting you. We we've been in um, been teaching out of the, the the book of Psalms. I want to look back in that we been dealing with the uh, the security of, uh, of trusting God, the security that you can have in trusting God, even in the midst of un uncertainty. Uh, even in the midst of uh, opposition, trials, sickness, pandemic, pandemics, and epidemics, anything that you may com confront or that you may be faced with or what you, whatever you may encounter, it is a blessing, the fact of the matter that being on the Lord's side, you can still feel secure. Amen. Don't let anxiety get you. Don't let the discouragement get you. Don't let despair and, and, and depression start trying to say, amen. We have not been given the spirit of fear, amen, but of power and of love and of a sound mind and of a sound mind. Keep on making wise decisions and keep on doing as God instructs you to do it, following the protocol, amen. Just continue to watch God work it out. We, we, we dealt with uh, divine, uh, divine protection, the, the, how that God can shield you from danger or harm. And now we're dealing with uh, divine providence, that God has you in his care. It may not feel like it, it may not even look like it, but just by being saved, and sanctified, filled with this Holy Ghost, being on the Lord's side. Amen. God got you in his care. God's concerned about you, and God has got you in his guardianship. God is guarding you. Because when we look at this, I want to look back at um, uh, let's see here. The Divine reward. I want to look at, we want to try to include both of them tonight. The last two. The last two here. I want to pop, I want to move from divine providence and move to divine reward and divine promise, divine promise. Let's, uh, I, I want to just briefly say, now listen at what he says here. 
Okay. The first one, number one, he said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And, he, and I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare. Now, we move from divine protection into divine providence, going into the third verse. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the father and from the noise of the pestilence, the, the, the dangers, and he shall cover thee with his feather. We talked about the feather, how uh, a chicken cover his, his baby chicks with his feather in the midst of dangers. And on his wings, wings, the variety of, of the ways that God will make way of, 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 of divine pro, pro, providence for you, how he will care for you and, and be in guardianship because we are under his wings shall thou trust and his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thank God for the truth because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And so now my God, we thank God for the truth. The, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So now this, the truth shall be thy shield and buckler. The, shield, the truth shall be your protector. My God. Thou shalt not be afraid by the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Even the storm that we face is in the nighttime. And even though the storm that we face is in the daytime, this lets me know that God, the fact that the divine providence God will take care of you in, in all situations, in the nighttime and in the daytime, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. And thousands shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Oh my God, this right here. Uh, at the end of the divine providence, only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. God bless your word tonight. Have your way, Lord. Bless those that are watching and listening, Lord. Strengthen them, them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. He says, the eighth verse, as we get ready to move into divine reward, he said, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. God will not only take care of you, my brother and sisters, but God will, 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 will show you the, the, the mind, the, the mind and the defeat and the downfall of those that are against you. This is why you ought to just thank God, hallelujah, for the fact that you are you're on the Lord's side, you are in a covenant relationship that God has allowed you to repent of your sin and to be baptized in water and to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. My God, you ought to be thankful. Thank God for knowing that there is power in the name of Jesus. And so he said, only with thine eyes. So the, the divine, the fact of the matter of divine providence, that God got you, that God got, got he's got you in care, and that God is in, he's guarding you. Because he's, he's, he's concerned about you. God is watching over you with his all-seeing eye. He's on the presence. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. So we know that God knows everything. We know that he's all powerful. And we know that God can be wherever he wants to be. So this is why, my God, it is a blessing that he can take care of your situations. And he can take care of my situations. And situations that he can take care of their situations. Situations that he can take care of those situations. You ought to just give, hallelujah, give God some praise for knowing that no weapon form against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you. And so now in the eighth verse here, 
In the 91st writing of Psalms, he says, by the anonymous writer, which wrote, David wrote Psalms, Solomon, Asaph, and, uh, and here go the anonymous writer. And he said, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see. And this is not spiritual. God will allow you to see the physical defeat. You, my God, if you cast all your cares upon him and humble yourself upon the mighty hand of God. In due time, he will really exalt you. If you be obedient, Follow God's instructions. And let God fight your battle. Let God hold your peace and let God fight your battle for you. And stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh God, to God be the glory. He said in the eighth verse, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. God will reward you for doing good and God will give you a reward for doing evil. You can get two different rewards. You can get a reward for doing good or you can get a reward for doing wicked and evil stuff. So either way, you're going to get a reward. Hallelujah. My God. And this is why you, you got to look at your own selves and you got to look how you live your life, how you conduct yourself. And in, in, in from, the, in from, the, from the perspective of how and what kind of reward I'll get. Because you're going to get a reward. And when he talks about this, only with thine eyes shall, then shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. My God. God got a reward for people doing wrong. God got a reward for people doing evil. God got a reward even for those that traps and snares for you because they talked about the snares of the father. Those that set traps for you. Those that are trying to entrap you, those that are trying to set you up, God got a reward for them. You let God handle it. Some things you got to let God handle. A lot of times we get in the way because we trying to do it ourselves. Let God handle it. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. It is amazing because he goes right into divine reward. So now when we read in the ninth verse, he said, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge. Oh my God. Even the most high thy habitation. Thank you, Jesus. Go to, go to the, the gospel according to St. John right quick. Gospel according to St. John. The, the, the 15th chapter. I just want you to see this. Listen to what he says here. Since, since you made God your refuge and thy habitation. He said, he's in this deal with the vine and the branches. But I want you to see the seven verses where I want to get to. He's the 15th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. First verse. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word. Ah, God. Thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. Sanctified and cleaned by the word. The word. The word. The logos. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thank 
God for the word. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He was full of grace and he was full of truth. So we are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. My God, the word walking word, the word, walking word spoke, the speaking word. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The word, mm -mm -mm. the walking word, the living word, the spoken word. Hallelujah. He said, abide in me. I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. You got to choose to, to, to stay in the Lord. You got to make a choice. Hallelujah. God, when we, when we, the fact that I chose to abide in him and made him my refuge, as it said in Psalms 91, he said, because thou hast, I'm going to reward you because you made me your refuge and even the most high, thy habitation. And so now abiding in him is, is, is that I, I, I believe that Jesus Not only is he God, God in the flesh, but the Son, the second part of the Godhead, the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. And in Jesus dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him. And so now, uh, abiding in, 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 in him, when it talks about abiding, he said, abide in me, the fourth verse, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Hallelujah. To remain there, even in the midst of storms, you stay in the Lord. Even in the midst of trials, don't go nowhere, don't go in the town, don't quit. Do whatever you do, don't give up. Don't you give up, my brother. Don't you give up, my sister. Because my God, God got it. God got you. By providence, you're in God's care. You're in his guardianship. God is watching over you. God is concerned for you. Divine protection, God is, is shielding you. want to be this depressed, you ought to give him praise. When you want to be discouraged, you ought to lift him up. When you feel like quitting, you ought to say, my God, I got to keep pressing my way toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. My God, don't you give up, my brother and my sister. God is still in control. God is still on the throne. <laughs> He's a mighty God. Oh, he brought you this far. And if he brought you this far, God can surely take you and take care of you. Don't you quit. Oh, my God. Praise him wherever you are. You ought to just praise him. And so now when he talks about as the branch Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me to remain in me. To remain in me. Hallelujah. To remain. I am the vine. Feel first. Ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. 
because God will not only be pruning and he'll be taking stuff off of you. The fact that you, the more, let me tell you something, the closer I choose to live to God, the more he exposes about me. Because the more, the closer you want to live to God, get ready to be exposed. Get ready to be exposed. Because you can't live close to God and not ex come into contact with holiness and not expect to get exposed. The light, he said. He is the light of the world and if the light will shine on you and it will expose some things that you may have hid in the cracks and the crevice of your life. God will shine a light of holiness in there. God Almighty. And he will expose you. And so now here when he prunes, when he purchases and prune and he's cutting off some stuff, cutting off some ways, cutting off some attitudes, cutting off some evil thoughts. My God, he's cutting it off so that you can be more productive and be producing so that God will get the glory. Oh Lord, I thank you. I am the vine and the fifth verse. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. He become, it's amazing. You gotta keep your connection to the Lord. Because through the vines, the tree, when the water falls onto a tree, the nutrients has to go down through the ground and come up through the roots and then go to the branches. Even though the water hit the branches and the leaves, but it has to go down into the ground. This is why it's so critical for you. You can cut a tree down and for a few days it will look like it's alive because the water that's within it and then once it dries up then it looks But the moment you cut a tree down, it don't automatically look dead into all the water. And this is the same thing about our life. And this is why it's so critical to stay connected to your life source. Hallelujah. The life source. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You'll come that we might have life. Life. We want you to live. And that you might have it more abundantly. In him is life. And the life is the light of my God. Means the light. Hallelujah. So thank God for life. Oh God. And so now this is why he says that. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings for much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withered. And me has gathered them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. Now here we go, the seventh verse. If he abide in me, because in Psalms 91, you have made the Lord your refuge and you have made him your habitation. If ye abide in me, remain in me. So when 
We think about our body, it is no, not that we can get inside of. I know that we are born into the church, into the ecclesia, the call out body of believers, born again and born into. But then abiding meaning that I, I, I believe in, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I, 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 I'm, and then I'm, and not only do I believe that he's the son of God, but I'm receiving him as my savior that he can, he can save. And God can deliver him. He's the savior and he's the Lord. Oh God. Believing, abiding in him being the son of God and receiving him as my savior get saved and he's my Lord he's in control and now doing what he says and then continuing in faith hallelujah my God and then you after, after you hallelujah that you believe that he's a son and you receive him as your savior and then you do what God says and you continue in faith my God and then you can relate what God has done in your life to somebody else That's when you can appraise him. That's when you can praise him. Oh, glory. You can praise him. You can testify that God did it for me. He can do it for you. That's what it about. Not just saying I'm just, I'm just in the Lord. Because if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Oh God. So believing he is Son of God, and God manifests in the flesh, and receiving him as your Savior, and doing what he says to. Oh my God. Then continuing in faith, and then you can testify and share with others of the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> you ought to give God praise. So when it talks about abiding, it's not just talking about I'm, I'm in here and I'm just not doing. No, you should be productive. You should be producing just like this vine. And so now this is when he talks about going now. Let's go back to Psalm 91 here. He says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, you have chose to live and to abide in him. There shall no evil ten first. There shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plagues come nigh thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. It is a blessing because when we think about angels, God's messengers, God's messengers, angels are something because they are God's messengers. And they have angels, one thing about angels, they have different functions. And uh, let's go to, uh, I want you to know, even, even uh, this was quoted to Jesus even in the New Testament here. Go to uh, St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Go to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. I just want you to see that. Then we'll look at some other, other scriptures. Because that was quoted to Jesus. See, Satan, listen to what he says 
in the uh, in the sixth verse. I'm gonna start reading at the. Uh, I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm gonna start at the first verse of the fourth chapter of Matthew. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when he, the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread." But he answered and said unto him. And said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning me and in thy hand their hand they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone see he's quoted the same thing was when he talked about it over there in uh, in that Psalm 91 and here it is here the same quoting it is amazing listen but listen that Jesus this is why it is so critical for you to not only allow, stand firm on God's word, the promises of God. And, and, he, and especially when he, he, he gave us an answer in the fourth verse. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So when you are facing temptation, when you are facing trial, of the adversary, temptation of the adversary, and being tempted of the adversary. The word, the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And so we read about it, the spoken word over there in, 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 in John. And the written word, he should give his angels charge concerning me. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. This is why it's so critical about angels. 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 Even the adversary was a fallen angel. Amen. Lucifer. When he was Lucifer, and he had fallen. And he, when he threw his fall, he was a high archangel. And he had such an influence, he brought one third of the angels. And they became demonic spirits. So they know this is why you gotta allow God to, the word, you gotta stand firm on the word. Especially when it comes to the adversary. The Lord, let God handle it. Thank God for the word. And so now with God's messengers, and go to the Hebrews, I want you to see a little bit more about angels. Angels. Go to Hebrews 1. made the angels. Now I tell you what, go to Colossians first then we'll come back to we'll come back to Hebrews. This is why you can appreciate God because of knowing see God is in control. Go to Colossians the first chapter and then we'll come back to go to Hebrews. The, the 16th verse of the Colossians 1. Listen to what it says. 
For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So the Lord God, God made angels. He made angels. He made angels. My God. He made them. So if he made them, he got all power over them. He's got all control over them. And so now when we think about angels, these spiritual beings are, they are created by God. But they are under God's authority. They are under his authority. To follow his authority. And so when Lucifer and them went against God. The water that went on in heaven. And it was cast out. How art thou falling on Lucifer? The son of the morning. Thou did as weak as the nation. Over in Isaiah. It talks about it. The war that went on. And so now, when he went and wanted to exalt his throne above the stars of God, when pride set in, Lucifer, God changed his name, took his heavenly name, Lucifer, to Satan, Bezalel, the devil, he took that name from him. Gave him, he's a defeated foe. He's a false accuser of the the devil is already judged. He can't win. He can't win. This is why all you got to do is stay with God. Divine protection, your security, divine providence, divine reward, and divine promise. Oh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. So now when we think about angels, now go, go to Hebrews 1 now. I want you to see the, the, they, are, they serve one of the functions of the angel. They, they serve the helpless, help those that are helpless. And they, and uh, I, I mean serve the believers and they protect those that are, that are helpless. My God, and then they, they, they are proclaimers of God's message. Not only do they, they proclaim God's messages, but then they execute God's judgment. They execute God's judgment. It's a blessing. It is a blessing. My God, that God got angels. <laughs> This is why you have to be careful how you entertain strength. Sometimes you may be entertaining an angel unaware. Angels. They serve the believers, their function. They protect the helpless. And they proclaim God's messages to mankind, to humankind. And then they execute God's judgment. Listen to what he says here. In Hebrew 1. Hebrew 1. He says. The 13th verse. Of Hebrews 1. He said. But to which of the angels. Said he. At any time. Sit on my right hand. Until I make thine enemy. Thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister, to serve, minister to serve? So to serve the believing, believers, those that are saved, those that have been born again, to, are these not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister, to serve them? Who shall be heirs? 
who shall be heirs of salvation, good God, to those that shall be saved, to those that shall be heirs of salvation, to those that shall be delivered, to those that shall be rescued, to those that shall be protected, heirs of salvation. If you are an heir of salvation, God got an angel calling on you. Watch it over you. Heirs. Shall, who shall be heirs of salvation? My God. What a mighty God we serve. Oh my God. And so now when we think about angels, there to serve the believers and to protect the helpless. Right? Goes down. Serve the believers. Protect those that are helpless and came to and need help. God will send angels and then to proclaim the message, proclaim the gospel, and then they are to execute. God's judgment. The function of the angels. Because God created them and they are under his control and his authority. Thank God for angels. And so I want to I'm going to stop here, my brothers and sisters, because I want to talk some more about angels. Angels. Because then you can really have an appreciation of angels. I want to, we talked about, number one, them serving, serving. But then I want to look at some scriptures as them protecting. And I want to look at some scriptures as them uh, proclaiming God's message. Then we want to look at some scriptures as them executing God's judgment, fighting for you, fighting for you. And so I pray that God will keep you and strengthen you. And so now we'll hopefully on next week we'll finish up with divine reward look at divine promises become divine reward through 9 through 13 and then we'll look at finish up on next Wednesday with this with this teaching hopefully with divine promise divine promise but I want to look back at angels I want to look back at angels so keep those scriptures that I've given you, Colossians 1 and 16, and then uh, Hebrews 1 and 14, as it pertains to angels. And we're going to look at some more, some more function, how they serve, how they protect, and how they proclaim God's message, the gospel, and then how they execute God's judgment, the angels. This is when, 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 when this was quoted, say quoted this, right? A lot of stuff he took out of context. And so, but he knew when it was talked about, and even in Luke, the fourth chapter, even in, uh, and when we read in Matthew, the fourth chapter. So I pray for you. I pray for your family. I pray that you will, uh, uh, continue to 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 be strong and uh, continue to follow the protocol and do as you were instructed to do. Protect yourself. Protect your family. And watch God work it out. I love you. Praying for you. To the security of trusting in God. Divine protection. Divine providence divine reward and divine promise. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you.